So uh, where are uh, this? Uh, Parts of the code for the expectation of position information. Okay, so position um, line two seventeen. See, it's. Uh, probability multiplied by this uh, x capital and, and uh, then you put summation, right? And in order to analyze the change of the position along time, we need this, uh, another line that accumulates this, uh, so it's, it's called a AVG here, it uh, accumulates in uh, um, variable that has it Add it again, again, and, and again. So if we open a new figure and put uh, you see some change of the position. Right now it uh, it is curly because uh, I didn't. Decline. I didn't remove the potential, and uh, um, it reflects and, and goes back, starts going back. But in the uh, last, in the last question that we are going to uh, go over today, we will briefly consider changing of the potential and running it to, uh, for several, uh, several models. Basically, when you go uh, for the rest of the semester, you will do projects when everyone will select his or her own uh, potential and investigate a problem specifying the potential uh, in, in the same way. So whoever, I know who this, who, who will be doing uh, these applications, you um, open the door for the whole class for the last month of the class. So, there, there should be additional variable for the same variable. It's all expectation values, all observables are computed at least twice because th there are different methods. And some uh, are computed three times, because uh, there are two reliable methods, two and uh, three, which uh, are universal. And there is one method that will work only for free space, but uh, it is used as a reference point. So this trick of making only um, multiplying by probability is possible only for um, diagonal operators. But if we do have operator that is off diagonal, like uh, momentum, we need to practice more general definition. So there should be a variable that uh, would implement the um, expectation value of momentum. And uh, let's uh, look through the code and identify where it is. Here they are. So 223, uh, so it is by uh, second mass. We multiply the uh, vector corresponding to wave function conjugated at given instant of time. 
by a uh, moment operator, which we know is a matrix, right? And then we multiply it by uh, the uh, wave function once again. So here we do not have summation sign because uh, here the matlab does practice here matlab does practice uh, row by column uh, procedure so the conjugated wave function is uh, row px is a matrix and not a regular wave function is a column so uh, Side point one, side point two, side point ten. Here are the metrics for uh, momentum, and then side point one, side point two, side point one. So uh, this equation is implemented to the line to the this way. Um, Couple of lines later, there is a trick to accumulate values, expectation values of momentum at each point of time. So if we, uh, if we would try to explore this original variable, it will have only one value that is not helpful for us. It's uh, maybe only the last. Uh, it is a future, but in one point. But we, um, we are ambitious. We do not need just one point of future. We need the whole trajectory how it gets there. So if you put this AVP, it uh, should Okay, here we are, uh, we did experience a little specifics. I wouldn't say it is good or bad. Uh, when I blindly try to plot the trajectory of momentum, uh, you did see that uh, it was some noise, not useful. So the um, procedure for computing expectation value So the uh, procedure for computing expectation value deals with wave functions which are uh, complex, which have imaginary and real part, and also momentum does have uh, real and imaginary part. Even if we know by our scientific intuition that uh, momentum is expected to be real, there is a the variable itself is complex and it has imaginary part which can be negligible 10 to the minus 16 compared to actual value but uh, if you well, if I blindly try to plot it it will show some uh, strange thing but if you neglect this imaginary part and plot only the real part then uh, it will look uh, reasonable
if one would plot Okay, so if one would plot both uh, position and momentum on the same axis, and uh, one needs to uh, scale them by the values uh, corresponding to 1 over delta x, which will in this case will be around 100, you see that um, you already know from your previous, uh, previous experience, and you kind of uh, can intuitively expect that um, if position changes quickly, then velocity is uh, constant if it is a, a same slope. And if it is, uh, if it slows down, then uh, velocity goes to zero. If it turns back, then it will start uh, growing again. So uh, by putting uh, at the same time uh, expectation value of position and momentum, one would illustrate and analogy between quantum uh, mechanics and classical intuitive expectations. So in many cases it is possible and reasonable. In some it, it, it fails. So um, uncertainty values. What is, what is this? Um, did you have you ever seen expressions like, like this? Not not in this course, but in your general uh, education. making summation, then uh, dividing by something, take its square root. Standard yeah, standard deviation, right? Yeah. So uh, we are practicing an analog of standard deviation from quantum point of view. Excellent. So if we put here the wave function star and without star and do dx and make integration it will be a st standard deviation division of what to where what does it uh, tell us we already covered it in uh, in class we already covered it in class and we did some uh, 
who works about this subject. So if your wave packet is not ultra thin peak, but uh, has some width, this, there is a expectation of value of position is where the center of the distribution is, right? And the uh, this thing computed according to this formula will show how far the wings of this distribution are going to the sides. At time zero, this uh, width parameter is defined by whatever we placed in uh, to the initial wave uh, function. And I think if we jump to the first five lines of the code, it will be x var uh, x var variable. But then, as time passes by, as your wave packet moves forth and back, the width may shrink, or more often it uh, expands. So it is an important variable, right? In addition, if you would remove this, um, if you would remove this expectation of wave position, then it will be an equation for um, expectation value of position energy in case the potential is harmonic, right? Uh, or it is defined. So let me invite you to the line number 218. And since uh, but, uh, the any polynomial of uh, position in the position representation will be diagonal operator, here one practices the same trick. Instead of doing uh, row by column uh, operation, one is just taking psi star psi, which is probe variable. And then uh, multiplies it by the position minus expectation value. So this is the vector, and this is a number. Make sense? So if you will, and uh, let's focus our eyeballs a couple of lines below. So uh, if you look on the variable which has a plural at the end, very answers, so it accumulates the variance at each uh, time step again. So if you want to look at the width of the old wave packet as a function of time, uh, may plot variances. Well, um, there is, although there is some potential, there, there is not much surprise. It uh, agrees with uh, what we have seen for uh, free space. As time passes by, the variance, the width of the wave packet increases. Here it increases even quicker because it bumps uh, into, it collides with the barrier 
and part of the wave packet stays near the bare parts gets back and variance even if the distribution is not like if it is not a single hump camel but if, if, if it is two hump camel it will still look in the middle between them and uh, compute average uh, variance which will be not an ideal characteristic but still uh, the procedure would work so how did Werner Heisenberg call called variants and design the principle Yes, perfect. Gauge plus one. So, um, if the distribution is very narrow, position is certain. If it is distributed, it's uncertain. So, the value of this variance is measure of uncertainty. Uncertainty of position. Guess what I'm going to do? There are conjugated variables that try to come in parts. We have position, we correlate with mm -hmm. momentum. And if you have uncertainty of position, you should look at uncertainty of yes. So let's look uh, over the code and uh, identify where is the uncertainty of uh, momentum. equation be a good representation of uh, uncertainty of momentum. So it should be interpreted as uh, psi star momentum operator minus expectation value of momentum square times psi dx so sigma sub p right and a couple of lines below there should be a piece of code to accumulate values of this uh, uncertainty of momentum along the along the code so this a s p here is the average sp in the line to 28. So if we are curious in the expectation of the momentum, we may want to practice plot of this uh, EVSP. Same thing as, as uh, before. Uh, if if I plot this uh, expectation value of, of momentum directly, it immediately comes up uh, that all variables or most variables here are complex, and uh, there is a noise even if. Uh, it has short um, imaginary. So it is multiplied by 10 to the minus 13. So 
it is negligible, but uh, it screws up because each variable is two-dimensional. One axis is uh, real and another axis is imaginary. So, and here, we need to focus on the, on the real part. Um, for this specific case, if you have seen the movie, when, when you run, you see that there is a barrier and wave packet it bumps into the barrier. So when it bumps into the barrier, it kind, kind of smashes and becomes more narrow. But then it reflects and, and becomes uh, broader again. And uh, if one would want to numerically prove when numerical proof of right or wrong, Heisberg equation, uh, Heisberg uncertain principle, when we need to multiply these two variables and plot them versus n and c, which ever gets uh, smaller than one, smaller than one constant square. So we are done with. Um, We are done with the uh, part that will be presented by Dylan and Gage. This four four points. Uh, I'm going to make circles around the classroom and see if you were uh, those of you who decided to practice these variables if you were successful to do it. And I will also take a breath for next uh, next question
We kind of quoted uh, real and imaginary parts of wave packet last time, right? Did we? You don't remember? Oh, yeah, enjoy. I got that. Okay. Let's qu quickly go over it because it, it's, uh, it's uh, it is fun for some people. So. If we decide to um, to plot real part of wave function, it will be ugly, right? oscillating too much. Uh, maybe we should start with C, C not. So. Um, when uh, I see it for the first time, I, th uh, I decide that I was um, someone was lying to me. There is an there is a promise that wave function is Gaussian, and this form is something a little bit more exotic, right? If the Imaginary, they also do not um, give us expected Gaussian. But if we add them together, so I'm just uh, lazy to type it in, but basically um, it is same as um, finding radius. You take x squared plus y squared and then square root, right? Lengths of vector. If you do the same with real and imaginary uh, components, real squared plus imaginary squared and square root, it will be length of, of a vector. Um, and it is abbreviated with absolute value. Absolute value of C. Is 
not hack with me. Uh, okay, then I will probably deal. So if we add, if we add the uh, absolute value, which means real square plus imaginary square and square root of them, so the um, distance from origin to both of these components, then it will be smooth, uh, smooth Gaussian. So when we try to visual, vis visualize a function, um, one, it is sufficient to plot real and imaginary part, but sometimes it, it could be confusing. It's, uh, it is more reasonable to provide uh, envelope function, which will be like ab absolute value or real square plus imaginary square square. Probably if we did it last time, if we did it last time, probably we also tried to redo this figure with different value of initial momentum. Did we? Did we try to redo this figure with different value of initial momentum? Yeah. So it, it will be, uh, if, if you have to present this uh, subject, it is really, uh, how to say, enlightening to your audience. Uh, so if you show that one can get different amount of fringes and correlate it with uh, the p naught parameter, with original momentum, it becomes really illustrative. Now you remember it, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, done with visualize really imaginary. Visualize potential and probability distribution. So I'm going to do something uh, well, this question, visualize potential and probability distribution, it is something really trivial that everyone can do without me right now. But I'm going to focus on it because it is very simple but uh, helpful way to intuitively analyze behavior of, of, of different quantum systems when we will try to do research projects. So, in some sense, there are not too many parameters. Most of the machinery of, of this code is already determined. We know how to construct Hamiltonian evolution operator. The, there are only maybe three things that one can change. One can change potential, which will determine which system we describe. One can change initial position of the wave packet, and one can change initial momentum. The rest is kind of standard. And then, depending on the uh, potential, which may have dips, wells, barriers, the wave packet will go to different sides will, uh, with different speeds. Uh, so the curvature of potential means a lot. And if you have seen the movie that pops up when you start running the code, it shows simultaneously potential and wave packet. So it is. Uh, I don't know if it is a big or small science, but it is really catches up mind of a human being. It helps to, to analyze what is going on. So the potential should be stored in, uh, in the variable V. Let me check. Yes. And uh, wave function should be stored in the variable, not very wave function, but probability distribution. Okay, so um, it 
this is not yet a complete practical prescription for solving any problem in uh, work when you see this important. But it is mostly closely related to real life to that we will practice in the course. So um, later on we will be able to construct potentials that we will describe uh, semiconductors, solar cells, uh, chemical reactions with activation barriers. It's all of these things can be rephrased in terms of one dimensional potential. And then depending on how the wave packet attacks the barrier or drops down into, into the well, one can describe most of the phenomena that one observes experimentally. So we, we are not going to quantitatively describe everything in the world, but you'll be able to qualitatively describe most of the fun processes in, so, in uh, modern science. Um, so in brief, you, you just plot two functions, two vectors, two variables with the same independent parameter. Right? Is there any challenge or wish list? What uh, could we do in order to make it more intuitive? Any thoughts and suggestions, or it is fine as this? What is Boltzmann distribution? Boltzmann distribution. You should have it in the uh, second semester of freshman chemistry. When you get to gas laws. The higher the energy of uh, a state, of, um, uh, the lower the probability that it will be reached. Therefore, the dust is taken from the floor rather than the top shot. So it's both uh, distribution. Okay. <laughs> I, I do not want to dust my floors because my house doesn't obey both distribution. Um, what is activation energy for chemical reactions? Okay, so it is a critical energy uh, of, that one needs to overcome in order, order to launch the reaction. It was a threshold. How does um, energy of what should be higher than activation energy? Yes, uh, but if there, if you repeat experiment again and again, one situation goes, another is not. It doesn't go back. React inside the same. How do you reach activation if the direction doesn't go? Catalyst, uh, what else? It, 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 it's great, but what else? Most cheap. So if you heat up reactants, the uh, activation barrier will be reached and reaction will go. Turn on the stove so if you want So what does it mean temperature? What, what does it change when you do the temperature? Which energy? So how many for potential? How many for kinetic? Majority. <laughs> so what, what does it mean kinetic energy? Huh? Energy of motion. Uh, just momentum squared, right? Okay. So, M V squared over 2. P squared over 2. Right? 
So if we do have a barrier and we need wave packet to, to, to be activated, like to go over the barrier, it means that we need to assign higher momentum. If the momentum will be higher, the kinetic energy of the wave packet should be bigger and it should overcome the barrier. Right? But right now, in this figure, do we have uh, kinetic energy anywhere? It's a little uh, idiotic question. Like, uh, we didn't request energy anywhere. We put V, potential energy, and we put probability distribution. So in, in a way for intuitive analysis of reactions, we are missing an important portion. We are missing kinetic energy. And you already told it to me that the higher the momentum, the higher kinetic energy. And the overall uh, wave packet should be higher than uh, barrier. So why, why don't we try to offset the, this line of the wave packet by the value of energy? We already did it when we were representing eigenstates of uh, particles in the box and harmonic oscillator. We were offsetting the wave functions by the value of energy, right? So if you would try to add energy to this probability, and this energy will depend on initial momentum that we assign, then this will become a very helpful intuitive tool when one can get uh, analysis of, of the expected pr uh, processes and predict the future in the quantitative way uh, like a snap. Does it make sense? Okay? So what should we do in order to practice this plan? We need to find expectation value of energy, right? which could be formulated, um, for example, as putting our ham, which is not food, but ham and maybe putting wave function star, <coughs> multiply, multiply by wave function, and telling that it is expectation value of, of H, right? And then, upon practicing this equation, if you if you are very uh, if you have if you are suspicious, we should compute it at any time step. If we are naive and uh, trusting, we can compute it once, because there are theorems that uh, uh, there is conservation of energy and it shouldn't change. But who knows? You may double check. But whatever, computing it once or several times, we would put this expectation value of Hamiltonian as an offset for this probability. And then if energy will be high enough, it will just shift up the energy and it will show that it will be over barrier. And then we will see whether it will go over or not. Or not. So I think the person who was writing it, and most likely it was me, was uh, naive and not suspicious. <laughs> so it is computed only once, as you uh, trusting that energy conservation holds. So uh, E2 and E3 in lines uh, 326 and 327 are expectation values of uh, Hamiltonian in version 2 and version 3 using appropriate uh, wave functions. So let's try to add this E2 and E3, well, E2 if, if you use the uh, second method for, for probability. What? 
our energy is imaginary. Okay. See, it becomes a little higher compared to it was what it was before. Let's maybe double check. Good. Uh, X comma probe two without dashes. So due to adding energy because of the motion of um, non-zero momentum, we offset from zero by like uh, point zero five of Hartree energy. So point zero five. It will be about one one electron volt. It's a substantial energy, and here we see that when it bumps into barrier, there is a, a little passing through through so-called quantum tunneling, but mostly it is stopped by barrier, right? Um, let's. I'm going to practice a little a little thing. I'm going to increase momentum two times and to redo this figure. Yes? Why is the kinetic that it brought to the Good question. In fact, here uh, I, I did add together not kinetic but total energy. Oh, okay. Kinetic energy would, would change. Um, there are two different things. It's, it's a perfect question. There is an operator of potential energy, and there is expectation value of energy. So this V here is a function. It's just potential as a function of, of position. And this uh, E2 is um, average energy which is one for the whole wave function, OK? So depending on initial momentum, we can make our wave packet so energetic or not energetic. And then it will consistently shift the whole wave function, up or lower. This is only visualization. The uh, way we computed expectation value is just a number. But we consistently add. We, we are, mixing apples and oranges. We are mixing, on the y-axis, we have simultaneously probability distribution and energy. Oh, okay. So it is, it is like a, it is a heresy. <laughs> so is the B like this one? This is X. Uh, let, let, let me be specific and just type it. Uh, X label position. Okay, but is the like, the blue graph? Is that one like it's V. It's V of V of X. Okay. V of X. Okay. I was just okay. It's fine. Uh huh. I was thinking of it. And Y axis will be probability distribution and energy. It's, uh, th this is not literally and rigorously correct, but everyone does so because it is really helpful intuitively. Then you look on the image and you Im immediately catch the, the, the whole process. So I'm going to redo the same figure uh, by running the code with different value of p naught. So um, it was about 0.4, but we do it like 0.6. I don't need to ramp it up too, too much. So in this movie, the energy is not offset. See, it goes over zero. But you, you see qualitatively some part of the wave packet passes through. So it's uh, half goes through, half reflects. And let 
it's um, so like green line represents the energy yes so it is our old figure and uh, I'm going to Colors were okay. We didn't have a green color. Green. See, we have increased the. Um, we have increased the momentum maybe uh, fifty percent more. It was 0.4. We made it 0.6, and energy growth substantially. So wave packet is definitely above the barrier and now allows some transmission through. And um, it's no wonder 1.5 squared will be like 225, so it's more than two increasing the value of, uh, of energy. So we did real and imaginary part. We did potential energy and probability distribution. Why there are three of them? Well, uh, there are several methods, right? There is uh, for which depend on how we define the momentum. I know it is. Uh, it will be a little waste of time if you do right now, but uh, additional five, ten, fifteen minutes, and you will find out variables for uh, third method, right? They are located nearby. Visualize any observable. That's true. You just plot it. Find uh, where it is accumulated and, and, and plot it or save it. Um, organization of data bundling groups of observables. So suppose that, uh, well, not, not suppose. You all are very busy. Maybe the uh, third year of undergraduate is the busiest time in, in, in life. And suppose that you do not have time to listen to this mumbling and uh, find command line codes to bring up specific variable. So for this situation, uh, when you run the code, you see that there are, there are popping up panels with uh, several images. Some people find it useful, some find it ugly, but uh, most of variables are already plotted. So if you look through this uh, groups of uh, variables, they are kind of labeled and, uh, and analyzed. So uh, position, momentum, um, uncertainty of, of momentum. And there are several lines because uh, there are calculations of these observables by three three methods. One, by pure, most, mostly theoretical formula, which is uh, for free space, when there, there is no potential, so it is as, as dashes. Uh, this line is not uh, shown uh, for expectation value of momentum, because it will be, momentum will be conserved if there is no potential. It will be just straight line here. And for position, it is a straight uh, same slope growth. And for um, uncertainty, it will be a square of, of, of time. And this orange and blue lines are observables computed based on uh, method two and method three. So if they are not equal, it means that something is not perfect. But still, we can use it for. Uh, analysis of models. If one really hunts for precision, one typically can uh, use smaller time step, smaller um, grid, grid point on position, smaller x step, but then one needs to, to have more of those points and it will become more and more expensive. Right now we are running single passage of, of a code within less than a minute, but uh, you can easily make it to work uh, for like 10 hours, if it is your goal. 
so, um, This is a good thing. I, I probably should t uh, talk of it. To tell about it. It's not a true variable, but it is a important characteristics char characteristics that uh, every chemist would like. So basically, we are looking. We are splitting the simulation cell in two parts, two halves and look for the integration of probability in the left part and right part. So in case it is a chemical reaction with a barrier, it will be reactant and product, right? So when we start and we repeat it at each point of time, so when the wave packet is on the left part, the probability to be on the left is 100%. Then, when it passes through the uh, barrier, there is a probability to form reactants, right? So, pro uh, pro amount of probability of reactants, probability of products. If it will be complete 100% uh, yield of reaction, they will intersect and products will go to 100%. And here is like, whatever, 30% yield reaction. Um, I will bring up a line of code that doesn't. So I'm going to cover two, two things, where this is uh, shown in the code, and another how to make up uh, several panels in one figure if, if one needs it. Okay, so we set up uh, the variable x2 as a midpoint um, in our grid points, and then we add together all values of probability distribution from one to this midpoint, and call it pro pro probability on the left, and then we add together all values uh, from the midpoint to the number of points, which would be Probability left will be integral from uh, x zero to center. And uh, probability right will be integral from center to x maximum. of uh, wave function square. If we would integrate um, from the first point to the last point together, it will be one. If you do half and half, it will be whatever uh, we get depending on how reaction is going. So it's one thing. Another thing is uh, how this uh, multi-variable plots you just put 
x, y, uh, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, and then you have several lines on one, on one point. If one does need to put several panels, you saw this, one figure with several panels. It is done by sub -close command. So uh, three panels, three by one, that means three uh, as a column, panel number one, and then you put whatever you need. Then three by one grid, panel number two, and you put whatever you need. I don't know if, if you need this. Any observable. I think we are done with this. Michael? Is it good? good. Okay, I'll make a circle, see if uh, anyone uh, has questions, take a breath, and then uh, we'll focus on movies and uh, applications. I will need a couple of minutes to prepare the, the show and then we'll go to, to movies.
questions. So uh, there are um, in, in the set of codes that uh, I was sharing a couple of weeks ago, there were like three versions of the code, right? And one of them has uh, like video lab number nine. Try to try to open it. Uh, there is. There is no big challenge. We can uh, add appropriate commands to our favorite version of the code with comments. It's like uh, additional five lines. But uh, for the sake of time, I'll better demonstrate it on the, on the one that is already uh, has these uh, features. So um, you can, for your future uh, works, you can either to start with the version of the code that already has enabled this uh, video processing, or just copy these lines into um, into the code that you're, you're practicing. So um, there is nothing scientific; it's just MATLAB stuff. So you need to define the open the file for writing. Define uh, define the file where you will be storing your uh, animated movie. And then, uh, so it is two commands. First, you uh, open this video, you define this video object, and then you open it. Then, inside the cycle, inside the cycle, you do need oh, um, you can do several commands uh, before you go get into cycle. Uh, but things will work uh, without it uh, as well. What is important is that inside the loop, inside the cycle, uh, you are doing, let me show it, to catch the screen again and again. Yes. So here are the commands. Um, if you do not make this uh, short pause, it may go too quickly. So you, you better put some simple pause. And then current frame equals get frame. And then in, the, in this right video, you are adding the screen capture from a, a current uh, step to this video object. I think Bill was uh, explaining it to everyone last time. And uh, if everyone was not too tired and attentive to Bill, we, we all should be masters of this uh, video preparation, right? And after the loop has ended, after the loop has ended, you need to close this uh, video object, right? And then uh, if you look into your directory where you were um, practicing, there should appear the uh, file that you have uh, requested. And uh, if it was a healthy healthy file, uh, you should be able either to um, include it into PowerPoint or upload it to YouTube or do both. video and then navigate to okay. uh, let's try if it will work with YouTube.
and he's worked on it. Okay, partial success. Maybe because I was not patient enough to uh, wait until it is ended, and uh, if you change aspect ratio, it is corrupt. But uh, generally, it, sh it should work. And uh, in addition to this uh, lines of code, it needs uh, patience. So, who is presenting the? Subject on the is is anyone uh, signed up to to the subject? Okay, then we should assign it either to Michael or to Isaiah. Okay. Two? No, you have two. I have two. He has three, so oh. it, to, to have yeah. even. And it is not. That's fair. Right? <laughs> and it is not too challenging. Just uh, probably everyone already has the skill, but it's better to repeat it again and again that when it will be time to practice it for actual research, no one uh, will have delays. And. If you try to do it and share your story of uh, success and failures, it would be it would be good. See, like I had some story of failures right now. So, like changing aspect ratio screw, screws up the rest of the beginning of the video. When it will be time for research projects and presenting them, um, you realize that it will be no time to make actual running of the MATLAB while you are staying at the podium, because time is limited. And animations are the best way to represent this dynamics and your prediction of future. So it's, uh, it's good to have an ability to uh, record it and store it and show it quickly.
Oh, now it works. Good. Okay. Whew. I, I, I feel better. So, um, box, finite, infinite, barrier, and harmonic oscillator. Whatever you do to uh, the variable v, and you know, if there are more than one definitions, only the last one does work. If you define it 50 times, everything except last one will be overridden. It's like in arguing, like my work was the last. So uh, if you multiply it by uh, zero, whatever, whatever it was. Play, play zero. Uh, save as if you be if you be free space. So uh, so right now. See, this um, barrier did disappear, and uh, both lines show propagation uh, with the center goes forward linearly and it's uh, increasing continuously. By the way, uh, if you are going to present this several examples, maybe preparing animations would be a really good thing for each of them, because uh, you will be limited in time, and there will be no not much to. Without animation, it, it is much harder to explain. Maybe only Michael would survive with his skill of hand waving. <laughs> and and this stuff of reactant and product uh, is kind of ridiculous and doesn't make sense. Of course, the wave packet goes from left to the. Uh, right part of the simulation cell, and it is 100% uh, yield reaction. So, see, there are commands once, once, once. So, uh, it is a command to populate an array with once. Like if I if I type. Um, once one comma five. What I'm going to get? Guess what? You you can do this experiment yourself. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't work for me. Shouldn't put uh, one or comma between them. This um, spell. Whew. Good. <sighs> so, if we need to define the simplest uh, potential for chemical reaction, like reactant, product, and barrier, we can tell that there is a certain 
value of energy at the initial part, reactant, there is a certain value uh, in the center and the, the, the third one. But it should be more than one point. It should have ability to move across. And therefore, we populate the space until the uh, beginning of a barrier is once. Uh, later on, we are So we defined uh, defined uh, three segments. So the X2 was defined somewhere as a midpoint. This one is the, um, there are three segments, left, center, right. The, this two times AB is the number of grid points dedicated for the barrier. So how many ones will be in the center? And then uh, at the rest, it will be um, also Sub, uh, substantial uh, the right amount of grid points so that the whole length of a vector will be uh, of the same length as uh, grid point in our x. Okay, and then each of these ones is multiplied by uh, constants, which uh, would determine rectangle rect barrier and product. So from now on, you can uh, stand up with the class, forget about grades, and start earning money by science. You, you already can. Just have a laptop with method and uh, a little of scientific intuition. So you can look into experimental data or uh, intuitive uh, assessment of uh, values of activation energy from experiment. Energy of reactant, energy of, of activation, energy, energy of product, and then through with this code you can predict the rate how quick reaction will go, and then you sell this data to the experimental collaborators, publish papers, uh, full uh, money from federal grants. So you you are already in the deep way. Of course, it, it's not always successful. There are some uh, difficulties, as in any activity, but in principle. You, you are already uh, making a uh, step into the uh, And you say you help us to go through this uh, yeah, uh, test. <laughs> it, it would be really interesting to, uh, if time allows, to quickly look at, at the trends and summarize uh, what are the typical behavior of the wave packets with one or another type of, of a potential. So if it is uh, free space, it just goes continuously. If it is barrier, it can either reflect back or overcome the barrier. Um. What if you put here big negative number minus minus three, and here you get the class.
it's a trap. <laughs> well, in scientific sense, right? So if uh, the uh, particle is uh, getting trapped, attracted to uh, some really energetically favorable, so it's uh, maybe a capture of a molecule by a uh, catalytic agent before any reaction, or just association reaction. There are certain positions in space where it is uh, mostly favorable to reside. And here we see that something is captured inside this trap and some passes through uh, further. So, which subject are we covering in the um, class? Which model? Yes. So, uh, how should we change potential to describe solutions? What, what is the potential for for oscillator? What is the potential energy for harmonic oscillator? Which function? Uh, uh, no, no, much simpler. Much simpler. Uh, potential energy for harmonic oscillator. Just x square, probably. So we, uh, when we go to left or right from equilibrium, energy growth. Right. So, um, if we want to practice it, then let's, then we need to go to the place where we define the potential. And instead of this barrier, we can just. Uh, Maybe and check one of those. So x squared will be sufficient, but we are starting our grid points not at zero, but uh, not at negative. We are start at zero, and uh, if we would put x square, it will show on the half, on the one whisker. Right? So we need to put some equilibrium position in this unit. So maybe center of our simulation cell. And um, with a little effort, one can find appropriate rigidity constant that would model realistic uh, situation. But uh, for the first run, one can just arbitrarily put some numbers and see if they make sense. This is not generally right. One, one better um, target aim before shooting. But we, we, we can try to see what, what, what happens. And if not, maybe just adjust the number on the front. We put the uh, center of the parabola at a uh, um, certain distance, and then we started with packet being uh, with bond being contracted, shorter than, than the equilibrium distance, assigning some distribution, some, some initial momentum. Then it was going downhill, probably if you would follow momentum, it would accelerate. And then as it goes further up, it goes uphill, it feels uh, resistance, and it's it getting pushed back. Then it starts moving backwards, and then oscillates for forwards and backwards. Right? So if we look on this uh, accumulation of several uh, observables, 
So position starts at 30, goes, goes towards equilibrium, goes a little further, then returns back, and then starts oscillating further. So it's just one, uh, one oscillation. Well, to get a, an oscillation, one doesn't need uh, quantum mechanics. It's simple. But there will be additional effects uh, of uh, quantized implications of uh, uh, the consequences of quantum nature of uh, nuclei onto, onto motion. Then uh, here uh, we started momentum more than zero, non-zero momentum, but then it kept accelerating because it was going down here. Then uh, it started stopping because uh, it passed past the center and started experience resistance and then the OST started to go down, down, down and then becoming negative, which means it started returning back. Then uh, it, uh, it was, at some point, it was uh, reaching the maximal negative and while approaching this velocity started approaching zero. So at this point, it, uh, velocity is zero. And then it started accelerating to a positive uh, side, and, and the velocity was growing. What is, what is uh, encouraging that calculations by uh, method two and method three are not much diverging. They diverging, it's, it's normal, but they show uh, uh, same trend. Again, this uh, least successful version of code that I was uh, running here for like 10 minutes. It uses much smaller time step, much larger number of grid points, and th there the discrepancy between methods is much smaller. It is possible, but it, uh, it is a burden to human patients. Um, And for all <coughs> and for um, all models that you run one can suddenly get into uh, a discovery or some interesting trend by looking on either one of uh, observables. So if, if we are modeling some existing experiment, then we do have a prompt what to look at. If you don't, we can just look on several standard observables and see how they, how they look like. For example, uh, if one would look onto uncertainty of position, for harmonic oscillator, you will notice, you might have not already noticed it, that instead of expanding forever, it will oscillate. So this uh, uncertainty will grow and then shrink. And uh, there are experiments that, that uh, confirm it. The, yes, I like this figure. So uh, this image uh, is, to some uh, sort, a replacement of a movie. So if, uh, if you fail to make a movie or you want to duplicate it, or maybe f some papers or written reports cannot include movies, you plot this, uh, the uh, distribution, probability distribution as function of position and time simultaneously. Right? And if you do it for a couple of models, you immediately see some general trends. Like for uh, harmonic oscillator, it oscillates. For free space, it just goes linearly. For a barrier, it will split 
on two branches. One pass through, another effect. Okay, I'm going to make a circle and check if everyone is happy. But uh, basically, we covered uh, everything that needs to be presented on, on Friday. So I'm staying here to answer questions if needed. If not, if someone is uh, uh, going forward to request treats, <laughs> then um, we are yeah, yeah. done. will be if you find yourself in the vision in the research and development of a company and people with whom you will see you will request data analysis on the origin or Excel then you need to do that. Okay. Okay. So as long as I do something similar to that. at 11 on Friday, submit PowerPoint slides by midnight on Thursday. Yeah, but how long are we allowed to have our presentations be? 50 minutes divided by number of people. Right now, uh, I, th I think there are only nine people who are continuously going. So it's um, like five minutes total, which means like three minutes presentation and uh, two minutes uh, questions. <laughs> um, there, 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 are, there are tricks. If you hate questions, you can make it a little longer, but if you make it too long, uh, your classmates will be upset on you for, for taking, uh, taking time. Well, Sorry guys, I got a lot to say, apparently. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they, they appreciate it. Oh, thank, thanks so much for... See you Friday. Oh, Friday. Your call will be disconnected.